So Jodine's got something to say for us, she's prepared a sermon. Yes, we can't wait to hear it, and Jodine is actually one of the pioneers for CS Girls, so take, take it, it away. away. Hello, kia ora. my name is Jodine, and I started surfing when full deck grips were all the rage. I've been part of the CS family for nearly 20 years, and previously I served in the role of National Women's Coordinator for CS Australia. Since late 2016, my role has been an associate pastor at Guymere Baptist Church in Southern Sydney, which ironically is the church where Christian Surfers was birthed out of in 1977. Firstly, I wanna thank you for the gift of your time and consider it an absolute honor to spend this moment with you. And I wanted to start by asking you a question. Do you have a favourite movie you feel speaks to the journey of your life? A movie that you resonate with because of the twists and turns the main character goes through. You see their discontent with the current situation. You see their opportunity to change it, but it means standing up against prevailing culture, facing their fears and potentially being rejected by those around them. You're with them every step of the way as they go through the lonely battle to bring about their preferred vision of life. And often they find their biggest fears are not outside, but within themselves. And with a lot of struggle and in spite of everything that is against them, they rise up and succeed. The ordinary person becomes extraordinary. And that's what makes this movie so inspirational and tantalising because it's what we crave to see realised in our own lives. Maybe your movie is The Lord of the Rings, The Hunger Games, Life of Pi, The Matrix, Whale Rider or Lion King. I'd love to hear what movie speaks to you by posting it in the comments right now so everyone can share with each other and see what movies inspire us from around the world. My go-to movie is Moana, whatever the movie it is. There's often a pattern in all of these storylines which looks like this. It's like a circle that flows around in a predictable cycle. The story begins and ends in the hero's ordinary world, but the journey of the quest passes through unfamiliar special worlds. There are several stages to this journey and this is what happens at each. There is a call to adventure where the hero receives an invitation a mysterious message or an unresolved challenge. To respond to it, they must learn beyond their current capacity and knowledge and receive assistance from someone who is often older, wiser and different from them. While they are reluctant and sometimes refuse the call to adventure, they eventually make their departure, leaving their normal, safe, ordinary world to explore the unknown special world. It's the we're not in Kansas anymore kind of moment. As the hero travels along the road, they face many different trials to test what is within them. They often have friends who are going through the same thing and helping them out along the way. They make their fateful approach. This is the moment where the hero alone must face their worst fears. The hero is thrown into crisis where everything unravels. This is their darkest hour and their fate lies in this final challenge. But in the face of being wiped out by this crisis, they are reborn. They triumphantly overcome, and for going through the crisis, the hero is given a special reward or perspective or power for making it through. As a result, they're changed forevermore. The hero then returns to their ordinary world with new life as they have outgrown the old. The resolution is that the ordinary world has changed for the better. All the tangled, knotty threads of the story are straightened out and the hero returns as a changed person to an upgraded life. And they all lived happily ever after. <laughs> and you can see the pattern in movies from The Wizard of Oz to Nacho Libre or even that late 80s tragic surf movie, North Shore, where Rick Kane, surf champion from a pool in Arizona, conquers pipeline and wins the respect of the hooey. It's so bad that it's good, but whatever the movie, the pattern still plays out. This pattern has become known as the hero's journey and was summarised in a book called A Hero with 1000 Faces, which was written by Joseph Campbell in 1949. He studied myths, religious texts and stories from different cultures around the world. And no matter what culture or century or people group, 
This storyline was a pattern that was common for all humanity. And it's not necessarily just for movies, but it fits for the incredible heroes of our history, like Martin Luther King Jr., Mother Teresa, Nelson Mandela, or even our own homegrown local heroes who have stood up against great costs to bring about change. You can even see it in Groundswell, the Christian surface story, with all the pioneers of this movement around the world. Now, I bring this up because the hero's journey looks a lot like our journey of faith. And if we are followers of Jesus, it's going to be helpful to know what to expect in this journey. Because how can you follow someone when you don't really understand where you're going? And if we can see the pathway ahead and the stages we will go through, it will help us to know what to practise in our daily life, depending on what stage you're at. Often our perception of following Jesus looks something like this, an easy ride from A to B. And then in reality, we find out it can look more like this, a hot mess of an obstacle course. And if the reality is surprising to us, it can leave us feeling confused, disillusioned and asking the question, is this really what I signed up for? While we had the shiny joy of the Lord when we started following Jesus, you soon find out it can be really complex to work out how to ride this unicycle of faith through the changing landscapes of your life. Because you're dealing with the daily grind of school or work, family, relationships, health, paying the bills and just trying to survive. And underneath the scaffolding of daily life can be the deep waters of our past, crush relationships that have never been reconciled, hopes and dreams we had to let go of, disappointments or failures, the stories in our life that continue to haunt and gnaw at us, or rising past trauma which demands to be resolved. Add to that, we're in the midst of experiencing a global pandemic and the upending of life. And if we're in the midst of these complicated moments of life, it can be really hard to make sense of our faith if we don't know where we're going. What I want to share with you is a framework that describes the journey of faith. This gives a big picture, 30,000 foot view of what you can expect when following Jesus. And surprisingly, it's very similar to the hero's journey pattern. The reason I share this is that it actually gives you perspective. Perspective to see where you are now, what has been and what is yet to come and perspective to know that God is with you whatever circumstance or stage you may be in. This particular framework is from a book called The Critical Journey, which has been written by Janet Hagberg and Robert Gulig. And there are links and resources available for you on CSI platforms if you're curious to discover more. Just as we assume growth of a human from a baby to an infant, to an adolescent, to a young adult and on to adulthood, it's absolutely necessary for your spiritual life to include growth stages and change. Following Jesus is a lifelong invitation and this book describes our faith similarly in several stages. I'll give you a brief summary of each so you can get to the big picture in your mind. These stages of faith are the call to adventure, to draw you closer to the heart of God, understand yourself and how you connect to the world around you. So buckle up shredders and let's take a look at the stages of faith. Stage one is your recognition of God. If you're in this stage, you've found God and come into a conscious relationship with Him. You feel a sense of awe and wonder at how big is and how small and powerless you might be feeling in comparison. You are a sponge with lots of questions, yearning to discover who God is. And you look to people who are further ahead on the road of the journey of faith to answer these questions. This stage is full of excitement, innocence, and a desire to see how God shows up in everything. This stage is like the first time you take up surfing as a beginner. You're on a big foam board, you're wearing a wetsuit backwards, which doesn't even fit you anyway, but you are so stoked to be riding whitewash and every surf leads you starry eyed and absolutely frothing for more. Stage two is the life of discipleship. If you're in this stage, this is where your faith expresses itself by learning about God. You gain meaning by following others who are following God. It's a time where you become aware of what is right and how to seek comfort and security in that by doing the right things. As you grow in confidence, you feel like you've hit the top of your first mountain peak 
as you've made it past the honeymoon stage of your initial excitement. Stage three is the productive life. If you're at this stage, faith means working for God. Your faith is based on what you do and is most often performance-based, competency and action focused. You explore who God has made you to be and how you can utilise those gifts and skills in the world around you. You develop power and security by what you achieve and look for opportunities for responsibility. You have endless zeal and energy, but also start to hit conflict and paradox as you ride the wave of productivity versus capacity. You also start to suspect that the outer world that you're working on has something to do with the inner world. Stage four is about the journey inward. If you're here, you've got practical experience in faith, but start to ask deeper questions because everything isn't as black and white as what it used to be. In fact, you find out that faith is 50,000 shades of grey. This stage often starts with a significant moment, an unexpected crisis, a milestone birthday, or the icebergs of your past that you didn't know you had slowly start emerging from the depths. You have a loss of certainty and begin to rediscover God in more complex ways than you used to know Him. You spend time reflecting and strongly held beliefs may be challenged by doubt and exploration of alternate understandings. This stage is difficult, new and challenging, and it's a place where your gifts and capacity of the previous stages don't really matter that much. It's a journey that needs to be resolved with God. And while it may feel like you're losing your faith or even your mind, you're starting to see God outside the box that you put Him in. Moving from stage three to stage four takes you from a place of confidence and security into a place of questioning, uncertainty and ambiguity. Good times. Now, the wall. There's a sneaky detour between stage four and five that's called the wall. And if you're here, this is where you get stripped of your ego and your will meets God's will face to face. In our broader culture, you hear it referred to as a midlife crisis. One of my favourite researchers, Brene Brown, says midlife is not a crisis, but it's an unravelling, a slow, brutal unravelling, where the universe pulls you close and whispers in your ear, I'm not screwing around. All of this pretending and performing, these coping mechanisms that you've developed to protect yourself from feeling inadequate and getting hurt has got to go. While the wall is an invitation, if you don't push through, you either plateau or regress back to your earlier stages and vices. This is a place many people can walk away from faith because they find it too painful, overwhelming or disorienting. Or maybe the faith they were taught by others never matured beyond that stage. The wall moves you out of your comfort zone on every level, maybe never to return back to it. It's where you connect the dots of your childhood conditioning and behavioural patterns. You meet with your deepest wounds, insecurities, your addictions and illusions, and you start to see your blind spots of your own dysfunction or your shadow side. And the core truth of the wall is that the struggle that you bring to the wall is not the essence of the wall. It's how you respond to the struggle and allow God to heal you that is the essence of the wall. And while it's extremely painful and very difficult, a place that we'd, no one would want to go and actually avoid, God is intimately involved in the invitation. And it's a process of going through the wall and bringing us to a place of healing ourselves and also our projected image of God. It's funnily enough, a sacred and holy space of transformation, which is guided by the Holy Spirit that often asks more than we are actually capable of showing up with. And the wall is a place of surrender to the healing work of God. If we were to put it in surfing terms, the wall stage is kind of like being caught on the inside and relentless bomb sets are coming straight for you. It's a stage of complete ragdoll and just going over the falls more time than you would like until you are washed up and spat out on the beach. But it's the experience that turns you into a better surfer because you've learnt what it's like to take a complete beat down. You may have heard of this stage referred to as the dark night of the soul because it can involve things like deconstruction, 
isolation, re-evaluation, connecting to our deep well of emotions and finding a version of God and ourselves that we've never imagined. It's a stage that's similar to the metamorphosis of a caterpillar, which does a complete chemical meltdown and completely changes its shape to a butterfly or the process of a lobster that has to shed its shell because it becomes imprisoned by its own skin. It cannot grow to the next level without removing its armour, letting go and becoming completely vulnerable. Stage five, once you get through the wall, then begins the journey outwards. At this stage, faith is surrendering to God and there's renewed understanding of yourself and the world around you. Instead of working for God, you start walking with God. You have a deepened sense of intimacy and hunger for life with God. You may also enter a new season of calling, vocation or ministry that overflows from an open heart that is secure in God's love. You see convergence of your life, your stories, your skills and relationships. And it's like the moment where Neo effortlessly dodges bullets because now he can see the matrix. Your focus becomes more about releasing and empowering others rather than yourself. And your shadow side is well known to you, but it's integrated through God's sufficiency. And finally, stage six is a life of love. This is where you become released and abandoned to God. Faith is reflecting God and you can do nothing to achieve this stage except just be. It's an extension of stage five with more intimacy. You no longer need the identity with doing things because reflecting God is who you are. You're immersed in God and are contagiously compassionate to others. While your body may be failing with health and increasingly failing and falling apart, your faith is firing. Now this is a limited overview and there's more depth to each of these stages, but you'll find out. For me, this framework was an absolute game changer because I had no idea there were stages of faith and found myself stuck in the wall. I didn't know what was going on or what to do. After reading the book, it actually helped me to work out what would be my next fumbling, but at least faithful steps. I've definitely made progress and five years later, I still find myself in the wall, finding new levels and versions of it. But I know where I am which is actually strangely comforting. There's a bizarre beauty in the brutality of this stage because the shedding of decades of conditioning, but unearthing of skills and perspectives and behaviours that will serve me for the second half of my life. And I've absolutely zero desire to actually go back to the stages before because what lays ahead is so much better. Faith is a dynamic, lifelong process, and other authors have also written about it. One worth mentioning is Richard Rohr, a Franciscan priest and writer who sums it up simply as the two halves of life. The first half of life is about building your sense of identity, importance and security, your container, and your external facade that the world sees. And the second half of life, often initiated by some form of crisis, develops in the inner unseen contents that go into the container to give it meaning and purpose. Whatever framework you use, knowing where you're going can reframe your faith journey and opens up the possibility that the hard places can be the hopeful places. Your breakdown could actually be your biggest breakthrough. Your prison could be your platform. And what may feel like silence could be immersed in God's presence. It also makes a case for community and why we always need people of faith going before us, beside us and behind us. And the thing we move towards through all of these stages is maturity, spiritual maturity. In the letter to the Ephesians in chapter four, verse 13, the disciple Paul who wrote this from prison speaks of the body of Christ being built up until we reach unity in the faith and become mature in the fullness of Jesus. Maturity is about finding deep peace, connection and completeness with God, as well as an unashamed, honest authenticity in ourselves. And while growing uh, older and ageing is a given, maturity is optional and it's something that we have to be intentional about. 
The grand narrative of the Bible is that Jesus has come to restore and renew all things. And while that extends to the whole world, it starts with you. We all have a hero's journey to embrace, but instead of watching your favourite movie from a distance, this is your unfolding story. This is your invitation from Jesus. This is your call to adventure. And in the words of Moana, the call isn't out there at all, it's inside me. So my questions to you are, what stage of faith are you in? What perspective and purpose does this stage give you? And what is the next faithful step that you need to take to mature through that stage? Because every journey of a thousand miles begins with a single step. I'd love to hear what stage you're in or your insights. So please add your comments to our chat and keep this community conversation rolling. And if any of this has sparked joy, have a look at the online links, podcasts and resources to help you along your faith journey. This is Jodine signing off from Australia. And now it's back to the studios. Thank you so much, Jodine. That was really cool. Thank you. And also we thought